people who hunt baby monkeys to sell them for pets, they shoot the mother and they steal the baby. And then somebody comes along and buys the baby. So that's not a, a very good thing to do, is it? Mm. No, it's not. That's Sharon Matola, more than 30 years ago. She's the founding director of the Belize Zoo, a feat she single-handedly accomplished way back in the 80s. She first came to Belize to work on a film project as a caretaker for the animals. And when that was over, the animals had no one to care for them. And so Matola stepped in, and her work blossomed into the best little zoo in the world. And ever since then, she has championed a movement of conservation and preservation of Belize's natural heritage. And she did it right up to her untimely passing. Her best friend, Lou Nicolaid, fondly recalls how much that meant to Matola. I think it was her whole life. I mean, even friends were incidental. Conservation was more important. You know, the animals, conservation, education. I mean, education and little people, little students, young people, were very important to Sharon. She understood very well that, that you can only uh, ensure a conservation ethic if you have education for youngsters. And Matola's idea of a zoo was different. She didn't want animals to be unhappy and locked up. All her animals at the zoo are rehabilitated animals that wouldn't be able to survive in the wild if released. She curated the zoo in such a way that the animals are still in their natural habitat. She created many books telling stories of the raptors, tapirs, and other species, building awareness and love for animals in her Belizean children. Matola was always known for throwing the best birthday parties like April the Tapir Bash every year. It was a highlight for students, or when she hosted dignitaries like Princess Anne back in 2001. And while the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center remain her single largest contribution to the country and people of Belize, her impact and her legacy are immeasurable. Sharon was a trailblazer. She was persistent, she was smart, she, was, she had a certain uh, charisma that was so uh, captivating. And obviously I think her contribution is that she brought animals into the homes and into the classrooms of Belizeans. Sharon brought these stories to life and she did it by allowing kids to go to the zoo and have an experience like no other. So I think there are generations and generations of children, adults and children alike, whose whole outlook about the animals of Belize was shaped entirely by Sharon. Uh, she is a conservation hero for this nation. I mean, we, we inherited the best little zoo in the world, and I don't think that there is a bigger legacy than that. Um, the zoo is the place that has welcomed probably all of us as children, um, given us our first introduction to our wild animals. Um, it is so special and with such a special vision that always stuck to understanding our own natural heritage and what is our biodiversity. And I think that that vision is, is, is simply amazing. It was never an ordinary zoo. And so uh, without a doubt, hands down, you know, that legacy will live on. Sharon's passing really signals the end of an era for Belize. She is perhaps the last of what I would consider those old school conservation warriors. Last certainly for Belize, perhaps for the region. Um, while she is known mostly for her work with the Belize Zoo, um, Sharon's work was transformational in much more than just the Belize Zoo. Work really touched on the three main pillars of conservation biology. She worked in research, she worked in education, she worked in conservation, and she really transformed those three fields. She had a tremendous impact across this entire country. Um, I think today Belize uh, is better off because of the work that Sharon did. Sharon, through her work at the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center, was the loudest voice for the problem jaguars. She rehabilitated more than 20 jaguars over the years and used their stories to spread awareness. In one of her last interviews with Matola, she advocated for these problem jaguars. We're proud of our program because we know if it's a problem jaguar, it has a problem, and she certainly did. She was missing a canine tooth. She was missing a canine tooth, Andrea, and she was missing bottom teeth and she had intestinal issues. She's a runt, I mean, look, she looks young, but she's not so young, she's a runt. So her making it in the wild and hunting just was not on her menu. And as you can see, 
how close can you get to a jaguar like this who actually has learned to like people? And while her presence will be missed, her impact will continue to be felt in countless areas of conservation. Matola is credited for the many careers she shaped and persons she inspired who are the torchbearers of conservation work in present-day Belize. I have known Sharon for I mean, almost 20, 25 years. Um, she actually is somebody that first introduced me to the world of conservation. Um, and she did that for many of the conservation professionals in Belize. Um, so I think, you know, today um, many people are mourning that loss, not just professionally, but personally as well. I first met Sharon over 25 years ago. And actually Sharon was the person that hired me for my first job in the field of conservation biology. And ever since then, I have stayed in contact with Sharon. We stayed in contact. We worked on numerous projects, numerous initiatives. So Sharon has had a tremendous impact on my career, on my work in conservation biology. I don't think there's another person like a Sharon Matola. She's literally one of those persons that come around once in a lifetime. And uh, I was fortunate to have known Sharon uh, since I was about six years old. Um, she used to come to the zoo to pick me up, to take me in, all the way from Bermuda Landing to go and meet the tapir, April, the tapir at, at the Belize Zoo. And so in many ways, she contributed uh, to my development and love for wildlife and for conservation. Dr. Colin Young sums up best the force that was and will live on as Sharon Matola from championing environmental issues as a staunch opponent of the Chalia Dam to an advocate for wild animals to naming the highest point in Belize. Sharon is as Belize as the Belize Zoo. Um, while she wasn't born here, she loved this country. She loved its people. She loved its animals. And she was willing to do all she can to trust them. Uh, even when it made her un very unpopular. So, and when she, she crossed uh, a lot of people, whether it was uh, her objection to the Chalio Dam when it was being built and the issues with trying to save uh, the scarlet macaws and the habitat, or uh, whether it is taking any other environmental issue and fighting for it. I think that fighting spirit is one of the defining characteristics of Sharon. I don't know how many people know that Sharon is actually responsible for naming our highest point in Belize, the Doyle's Delight, uh, which is taller than Victoria Peak. And she named it in 1989 uh, based on, on the lost world. Um, and so it's fitting that this giant of a woman, this giant of a human being, was responsible for naming our highest point uh, in this country. And I think. That ought to symbolize in more ways than one that how towering a figure she was in Belize. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.